Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this week's Virtual Journal Club. My name is uh, J.P. Britton, endocrinologist at Mayo Clinic, and uh, today I have the honor to introduce Dr. Luca Giovanella, and he's going to be presenting uh, our, uh, our, our talk today about procalcitonin as an alternative tumor marker of nigrolarital cancer. But before I introduce Dr. Giovanella, I want just to bring the attention to the audience to our new platform, Tyro. Tyro is an application that you can download in your phones or in your computer. And Tyro is a, is a, is a source of information to use in the encounter with patients. Um, is, is a, is a, it's a compilation of recommendations in the management of thyroid cancer to the extent to which if you have questions about which nodules need biopsy or how do I follow a patient with low risk papillary thyroid cancer, or how to treat a patient with radioactive iodine with thyrogen versus not thyrogen, this Tyro uh, application has the question and the answers to those ones. And in addition to that, it also offers educational materials. So I will encourage the audience to take a look at Tyro. You can see there the, the website, uh, tyro.expert, and you can also use the QR uh, link uh, in our the screen right now. Now, uh, let's continue with our presentation today. Dr. Luca Giovannella uh, completed his uh, medical training at the University of uh, Pavia in Italy in 1991. Then he obtained his postgraduate specialist degrees in nuclear medicine in 1995 and also experimental endocrinology at the University of Milano in 2000. Currently, he's a professor of the School of Medicine at the University of Zurich. And he's also the consultant and scientific advisor in the Department of Clinical Chemistry and Laboratory Medicine the Medical Scientific Director of the Imaging Institute of Southern Switzerland, and the Clinical Director of the Competence Center for the Diagnosis and Therapy for Thyroid Diseases. He's also the Chairman for the Clinical Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging. His clinical and scientific activities are mostly focused on the diagnosis and treatment of thyroid diseases, molecular imaging, and oncology, diagnostics, and laboratory medicine. He has authored more than 300 peer-reviewed uh, scientific papers, and he served as members of many editorial boards of different journals, including Thyroid and the European Journal of Nuclear Medicine. And with that, I will turn it over to you, Dr. Giovanella. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Well, thank you very much, and good morning, everybody. I'm honored for your invitation. And uh, yes, we can start uh, to discuss about the role of procalcitonin as an alternative tumor marker for medullary thyroid cancer. Is my screen okay? Yes, I can I, I can see your screen. Perfect. Okay, so the objectives of uh, my lecture this morning are a general record on basic concepts on medullary thyroid carcinoma. Dr. Giovanella, sorry to interrupt. Uh, we are seeing it in the, and the, we are not seeing in the, in the presentation mode. Oh, yes, if you just click the present. It's okay? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, now it's oh, fantastic. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, after this general recall, I'll discuss about the diagnostic approach to thyroid nodules with special reference on problems, specific problem in diagnosing medullary thyroid cancer. Then I'll discuss indications, interpretation criteria and pitfalls of calcitonin measurement. And finally, I'll approach the role of serum procalcitonin as an alternative MTC biomarker. As uh, you well know, uh, Medullary thyroid cancer developed from C cell, parafollicular thyroid cells. C cells uh, means uh, calcitonin producing cells. Then in the parafollicular thyroid cells, uh, the Cal1 gene is uh, transcripted and uh, procalcitonin is uh, uh, produced. And finally, after proteolytic cleavage, calcitonin is uh, biosynthesized and released by C cell. So the procalcitonin is a precursor of calcitonin, is uh, larger, 141 amino acid, the pre-procalcitonin, and 116 amino acid procalcitonin, while the calcitonin molecule is only 
32 amino acid long. The medullary thyroid cancer is a neuroendocrine cancer derived from C cells. It is rare as only 2 to 5% of thyroid malignancy, meaning 0.4 to 1.3 of thyroid nodules are medullary thyroid cancer for a prevalence of 1 on 14,000. The specific biological hallmark of MTC is an increased biosynthesis and release of calcitonin. There are inherited forms of MTC that uh, account for about 25% of cases. In such cases, mutation on red proto oncogene are involved, and the genetic screening in families and early interventions in carriers are needed. Most MTC, about 75%, are sporadic. But it is interesting to note that when genetic screening is performed in patients uh, carrying uh, apparently sporadic MTC, about 7% of patients still carry a red proto oncogene mutation. This is just uh, a case we observed. This is a young patient with a main 2A syndrome. You can see here the main focus of MTC in the right lobe and the small focus of uh, tumor in the contralateral lobe that is a typical for inherited uh, MTC, the multifocality. And you can see here the F-DOPA PET showing uh, both uh, tumor foci, but also a pheochromocytoma that is typically associated to MTC in these uh, forms. Clinically, we are more frequently faced with uh, patients with sporadic MTC and uh, working in a tire center. The first uh, observation is frequently related to patients carrying a tire nodules. Sporadic MTC uh, average age of patients is between uh, 40 and 60 years. Uh, concerning the location, this may be a useful information when we perform ultrasound, is the middle third of thyroid lobes. And uh, it is interesting and relevant to note that when a patient presents with a palpable thyroid nodule, so a clinically appearing thyroid nodules, 50 to 70 percent of patients uh, uh, have cervical metastasis and up to 10 percent have distant metastasis. What is the role of circulating calcitonin in patients with MTC? Being the specific uh, secretory production of C cells, calcitonin is currently the standard of care for MTC diagnosis and also for screening. We will discuss in more details later and MTC monitoring after surgery. Concerning the diagnosis of medullary thyroid cancer, the typical classical flowchart for approaching thyroid nodules that is composed by family history, clinical examination, ultrasound, and fine needle aspiration cytology is not so successful for MPC compared to patients with other thyroid cancers. In fact, the picture of MTC in ultrasound is uh, variable. There are some recent papers that show using titurats criteria improved the accuracy in the detection of uh, uh, suspicious nodules, including MTC. However, TIRATS is not, of course, uh, histotype specific. And uh, it is a stratification model to proceed with fine needle aspiration. And even concerning fine needle aspiration, there is uh, many data showing that uh, when a fine needle aspiration is performed in a nodule uh, and uh, the diagnosis is medullary thyroid cancer, cytology alone may miss up to 50% of cases. All in all, approaching nodules with a conventional approach 
produce up to 50% of MTC undetected. These in turn increase the risk of more advanced disease and the lower rate of radically cured patients. Additionally, suboptimal follow-up is, uh, is caused by uh, missing initial diagnosis of MTC as and calcitonin and uh, preoperative biomarkers will not be assessed before surgery. There are two additional tools able to significantly improve accuracy of cytology alone. The first one is calcitonin immunostaining on cytology material. And the second one is uh, measurement of, of calcitonin on the fine needle washouts. These methods significantly increase our ability to detect a medullary thyroid cancer, but of course, they need a preliminary measurement of, of calcitonin in order to properly inform such additional procedures. And this open our discussion on MTC screening. MTC screening can be Perform it, is performed by systematic calcitonin measurement in patients carrying thyroid nodules. Advantages of calcitonin screening is high sensitivity as uh, the prevalence of sporadic MTC not secreting calcitonin is just uh, 0.8%. As uh, previously discussed, Screening of CT allows for reflex procedures as uh, fine needle aspiration, immunocytochemistry, or calcitonin washout. And uh, this is theoretically related to a more favorable prognosis. However, it is important to remind that uh, there are no prospective randomized trials that evaluated the efficacy of uh, calcitonin screening compared to standard evaluation, and that the clinical significance and natural history of micro MTC that are diagnosed by CT screening is unknown. And finally, we need to balance the advantages of uh, early detection of MTC in about 0.4% of patients to the risk related to a more uh, to a more largely applied surgery in patients with positive calcitonin levels. Accordingly, currently available guidelines uh, were not able to uh, recommend for or against uh, calcitonin screening, and consequently, this practice is uh, uh, largely variable between countries and uh, regions, hospital, and uh, also physicians and specialists. Uh, the guideline of uh, AACA, AME, and the European Thyroid Association uh, suggested to perform calcitonin before surgery for nodular goiter in order to have uh, preoperative uh, biomarker assessed in case of uh, diagnosis of MTC on histopathology examination, and uh, also suggest that the measurement of serocalcitonin may be useful test. All in all, any single physician or center or association is free to evaluate uh, locally if uh, calcitonin screening uh, is uh, needed or not. Concerning our practice, uh, we perform calcitonin screening. This is a relatively you know, largely applied in German speaking countries, uh, Germany, Austria, uh, Switzerland, and other countries. I know that the situation is largely different in the United States and, the other, and other countries. And this remains a matter of debate. One of the problems related to calcitonin screening is uh, uh, the not uh, negligible number of patients uh, without MTC showing increasing marker uh, levels. The analytical challenges of serum calcitonin uh, are a concentration dependent and biphasic half-life. 
So the disappearance of calcitonin from the bloodstream depend on the initial concentration and follow two different uh, half-lives. Uh, one of the most relevant problems is the sensitivity of the calcitonin molecule to the rapid degradation by serum proteases. And this uh, reduces the concentration of uh, calcitonin uh, after uh, blood sampling. Then uh, special attention to the pre-analytical phase is required. And finally, there are different immunoreactive isoforms and fragments due to this degradation, and these may lead to inaccurate results again, and especially poor comparability of results obtained by different assays. This uh, picture shows the decrease in serum calcitonin in five patients when the sample was stored at uh, room temperature in uh, refrigeration, that means uh, for Celsius degrees or even frozen, that means uh, minus 20 Celsius degree. You can see here that uh, the decrement of calcitonin concentration of up to 50%, uh, of up to 30, 35%, and up to 30% can be observed even in the best uh, situation when the sample is uh, uh, stored frozen. Another relevant problem is represented by reference ranges. The first problem is that different immunoassay for calcitonin perform differently, and so results are not comparable. That uh, median levels and distribution of calcitonin is, is different in males and females with lower serum calcitonin levels in uh, females, and this need to uh, select uh, uh, gender specific uh, reference ranges. And even in this condition, you can see here that a not insignificant number of patients without MPC have serum calcitonin levels in a gray zone that, of course, reduce overall accuracy. Finally, there are some data showing that. Uh, the reference range for uh, calcitonin should be arranged for the age of uh, patients. And this is especially true for, sorry, this is especially true for uh, neonates and the pediatric patients. All in all, to properly uh, uh, evaluate calcitonin levels, we need uh, assay specific, gender specific, and population specific uh, reference ranges. And we also need to consider that a modest to moderate increase in serum calcitonin is observed in benign C cell hyperplasia, in chronic kidney disease, in non MTC neuroendocrine tumors, in some leukemias, in systemic mastocytosis, in some solid tumor as small cell lung cancer, breast cancer, pancreatic cancer, in hyperparathyroidism. In autoimmune thyroiditis, even if uh, this is a debated issue, and in some uh, physiological conditions as pregnancy and lactation. To overcome the problem of uh, uh, false positive calcitonin levels in patients without MTC, stimulation tests with pentagastrin and uh, more recently calcium uh, were suggested. However, it is important to note that even after stimulation, the published decision limits uh, uh, vary widely for pentagastrin uh, stimulation from 30 to 1,000 picograms per ml. And uh, even using uh, uh, stimulated uh, calcitonin, uh, we obtained a 10% uh, uh, detection rate when stimulated calcitonin after pentagastrin exceeded 1,000 picogram milliliters, while for uh, stimulated uh, uh, calcitonin levels between 100 and 1,000 picogram milliliters, 
the detection rate or sensitivity is only 20 percent. In the right side, you can observe more recent data obtained using stimulation with calcium gluconate. And uh, it is interesting to note that, that uh, in any condition, the sensitivity and specificity profile of stimulated calcitonin is uh, not superior to those of basal calcitonin. And this is the reason uh, why stimulation of calcitonin is currently uh, is currently is not currently recommended uh, in clinical management of such patients. All in all, it is important uh, to remind in our clinical practice that if uh, we decide to use calcitonin any positive levels should be carefully investigated in order to rule out the number of conditions other than MPC before proceed with uh, uh, clinical actions. Then an alternative tumor marker is warranted and uh, procalcitonin is probably one of the most promising uh, alternative tumor marker in NPC. You know that procalcitonin is currently used in laboratory medicine and in clinical practice as a biomarker of sepsis. This is due to the transcription of uh, calcitonin and procalcitonin mRNA in adipocytes during inflammatory processes. However, in physiological condition, thyroid procalcitonin is only produced and released in very small concentration by C cell within the thyroid. This is an advantage as uh, this is a tissue specific uh, marker outside clinically easily detectable situation as sepsis. There are uh, one uh, patent for PCT assay, and this uh, allow a better comparability between different assays. There is a concentration independent and highly predictable half life of serum procalcitonin of 20 to 24 hours. And finally, PCT displays an excellent in vitro stability in serum or plasma. And this is a significant advantage compared to calcitonin measurement. This is a comparison between stability or instability of calcitonin and procalcitonin from the same five patients. This is calcitonin, I already showed you, and this is the stability of procalcitonin that is significantly better. There are many studies, and this is one of the uh, firstly published by Algecira Smichnich and colleagues on JISEM in 2009, showing that uh, procalcitonin and calcitonin uh, display a comparable accuracy in detecting MTC. You can observe here, and I will describe this problem later, but the rock curve of uh, procalcitonin is slightly inferior compared to the curve of calcitonin. There were no significant differences in the area under the curve, and that this uh, slight difference is related to the use of calcitonin as a, a diagnostic tool. That means uh, patients were diagnosed as having MPC basing on calcitonin as a gold standard. So in this condition, the best uh, uh, performance of an alternative marker is non-inferiority, but using calcitonin for confirming the diagnosis, the performance of procalcitonin cannot be significantly better than that of calcitonin. The use of procalcitonin is uh, mentioned in uh, current uh, guidelines uh, of American Thyroid Association. 
they uh, mentioned one paper showing uh, uh, high procalcitonin to calcitonin ratio in patients with uh, more aggressive diseases and uh, stated that uh, in, in studies uh, of comparison, the calcitonin was found to have equal or superior diagnostic accuracy, but this is related to the statistical uh, phenomena I previously described. In order to evaluate the role of procalcitonin to screen medullary thyroid cancer, we used procalcitonin in 2,750 patients with thyroid nodules in our center. There were the PCT positive patients, that uh, means patients with detectable or more than limit of quantification levels, so more than 0.1 microgram per liter. And uh, there were nine patients with positive PCT. These were operated on after positive confirmatory tests as uh, calcitonin, five needle aspiration, five needle aspiration with calcitonin washout, uh, stimulation, and so on. And a final diagnosis of MTC was reached in seven out of nine patients. There were a lot of patients with a negative PCT. Among them, 370 were operated based on results of our further diagnostics, that means uh, uh, non-MPC thyroid cancer, benign uh, goiter and uh, hyperthyroidism and so on. And uh, none of them show with MTC at histopathological analysis. There was a clear difference in median uh, concentration and distribution in patients with compared to those without MTC. Globally, the sensitivity and specificity of uh, procalcitonin were 100% and 99.7%. Positive predictive value and negative predictive value were 92% and 100%. And the overall accuracy was as high as 99.7%. And specifically, the positive and negative likely yield ratios were 329 and zero, meaning an undetectable procalcitonin uh, reliably rule out MTC in patients carrying nodules, while a positive results greatly increase the risk of carrying MTC. This uh, is uh, the table showing the nine patients with positive procalcitonin. There were two patients with uh, a final benign. Uh, diagnosis. In such cases, uh, procalcitonin was slightly detectable. In one case, calcitonin was negative, and the, in another case, calcitonin was also slightly detectable. In all remaining cases, procalcitonin was significantly increased, except uh, the last one. In some cases, cytology was uh, non-diagnostics. In some cases, it was not performed as uh, stimulation was uh, performed and tested positive. So, accepting some two patients with slightly detectable uh, procalcitonin, all patients with positive uh, levels of the marker uh, were demonstrated to carry a medullary thyroid cancer. And this is the rock analysis and the distribution of procalcitonin and uh, calcitonin in our population. You can see here that uh, procalcitonin showed an absolute accuracy. Uh, there was an absolute accuracy for calcitonin as well with a slight difference. And this is the opposite of the phenomenon I showed when calcitonin was adopted as gold standard for the diagnosis confirming that these uh, slight differences are not significant as they depend by the gold standard adopted. What is uh, interesting here is to note that there is overlap between uh, benign and uh, MTC patients in 
just one case, while the overlap between benign and uh, MTC uh, concerning calcitonin levels was more relevant, confirming procalcitonin is more specific in such uh, cases. Another relevant uh, data published by Mackens and co-workers is the relationship between uh, procalcitonin levels and, uh, uh, and uh, the TNM stage, uh, preoperative TNM stage uh, of MTC. And in particular, uh, serum procalcitonin levels were significantly related to the extension of the disease, meaning the, the diameter of the main tumor foci, the number of lymph node metastases, and were also able to predict the biochemical cure after surgery, which, of course, cure rate decreasing uh, uh, when uh, serum procalcitonin levels increase. Even in such a case, a comparable performance between procalcitonin and calcitonin was demonstrated. More recently, a large study evaluated the role of procalcitonin in patients already treated for a medullary thyroid cancer. And uh, Crutch and co workers evaluated <coughs> two, two, uh, two, uh, 210 serum samples from 169 patients. And uh, they measured uh, calcitonin by an erythroquinescent assay and PCT by three different uh, immunoassays. They evaluated the relationship between uh, levels of procalcitonin and the disease status uh, defined uh, basing on calcitonin levels. So cured patients showed calcitonin levels uh, below the limit of quantification. The minimal residual disease showed detectable calcitonin levels and no metastasis at imaging while metastatic disease showed structural disease independently by calcitonin levels. And uh, they demonstrated a significant uh, relationship between uh, levels of serum procalcitonin and disease status with low undetectable to very low levels in cured patients, slightly detectable levels of procalcitonin in patients with minimal residual disease and clearly increased levels in patients with metastatic disease. Notably, there was a significant correlation between the three procalcitonin assays. And uh, they concluded that uh, procalcitonin uh, showed a comparable performance with calcitonin but uh, uh, also show the superior analytical, uh, analytical characteristics and suggested to use procalcitonin as an alternative biomarker to follow patients with MTC. As, uh, despite uh, a significant number of studies, the use of procalcitonin in clinical practice is not so widely applied, we decided to perform a meta-analysis in order to provide more robust data on procalcitonin in MTC. We based our meta-analysis on two research questions. The first is, are serum levels of prositive predictive of MTC in patients carrying thyroid nodules? And the second is, are post-operative levels of prositive indicative of response to treatment. We included studies uh, that enrolled patients with MTC and uh, measured procalcitonin measurement compared to calcitonin. The outcome was the diagnosis of MTC based on calcitonin test, and both uh, retrospective or prospective studies were included. After uh, examination of a large number of, stu of studies, 11 were finally retrieved, five retrospective, six prospective for uh, a 
global number of patients of 5,800. These are technical details uh, of uh, essays uh, and threshold and methods employed in different studies. I think uh, it is uh, for a, a post, uh, post speech uh, analysis, as I suppose my presentation will be released to our attending colleagues. But uh, overall data uh, were derived by forest plot and the hierarchic summary rock analysis. And you can see here uh, that uh, the, the overall sensitivity and specificity of procalcitonin. Okay, you can see here the combined sensitivity and combined specificity uh, obtained using uh, uh, procalcitonin. And uh, you can see here the bullet sensitivity was 0 0.9 and the pool specificity was 1.0. And again, the likelihood ratio for MPC was 288 in patients with positive procalcitonin, while the negative likelihood ratio was 0 0.1 in patients with negative PTC. Okay. And this is the data concerning patients uh, already operated on for MPC. And again, overall sensitivity and specificity were very high 0 0.93 and 0 0.91 for uh, positive and negative uh, positive values with a positive uh, likelihood ratio of 10.8 and then a negative likelihood ratio of 0 0.08, meaning a negative uh, uh, procalcitonin level is a highly reassuring uh, indicator of, absent, of absence of relapse. There's some problem moving my slides. My slides are blocked, sorry. Okay. And this is the, the hierarchical uh, uh, rock curve related to the post operative uh, prediction. It is important to underline some notes concerning our results. The first one is the already illustrated problem of the superiority of uh, uh, when a gold standard is uh, used to uh, confirm the diagnosis. In fact, uh, the clinical performance of calcitonin is clearly biased to 100% sensitivity as uh, we can uh, obtain uh, increased calcitonin, but undetectable procalcitonin may, uh, may observe it, but is not generally obtained at that time. And in these cases, a clinical workup for MPC is prompted, and also vice versa. A calcitonin values within reference range may be associated to an increased procalcitonin but as procalcitonin is not measured, this is not generally followed by further controls. So we can skip some calcitonin negative MPC when procalcitonin is not used and vice versa. Another interesting uh, data is uh, related to the difference in uh, cutoff and immunoassay adopted in different studies. 
for this uh, problem, we uh, performed a subgroup analysis in the meta regression analysis. We demonstrated a slight reduction in accuracy when different cutoffs uh, were used, but compared to calcitonin, procalcitonin continued to show a very high clinical value independently from the adopted cutoff. When different immunoassays uh, were adopted, no differences were observed in meta-regression analysis. And this confirmed that uh, comparability between different uh, PROCT methods is very high. Another advantage of procalcitonin is that uh, no significant difference between male and females are reported in literature. This is probably and also related to the fact that mostly healthy subjects have undetectable procalcitonin levels, and this greatly reduces the likelihood of showing a significant difference. This is another advantage compared to calcitonin, where gender specific uh, thresholds are needed. Of course, there are some problems uh, in accepting uh, procalcitonin as an alternative marker in clinical practice. The first one is that uh, calcitonin is traditionally adopted is a good uh, marker. Many patients are forward uh, uh, based on calcitonin, and so the medical community can, uh, can, can be unfavorable in introducing a new diagnostic standard. The other problem is that uh, procalcitonin is, uh, is uh, approved for uh, sepsis, but not for medullary thyroid cancer. And uh, probably device manufacturer may favor an off label use instead of presenting a, a new request for approval of uh, ProCT in medullary thyroid cancer. So, all in all, also basing on our personal experience, it's probably reasonable to firstly adopt procalcitonin as a complementary marker in patients with thyroid nodules and positive calcitonin. And those patients uh, already operated on for MTC with unclear post-operative uh, CT measurement with uh, fluctuation and uh, inconsistent uh, pattern compared to the clinical status. Today is also possible uh, to use uh, to perform calcitonin and procalcitonin measurement on the same automated platform, and this allow uh, to create a reflex algorithm. Uh, uh, that means uh, when a positive calcitonin is found, the procalcitonin measurement is automatically reflected uh, as a confirmatory test. I just observed in uh, this week a patient with a clearly increased calcitonin level with two small but highly suspicious uh, nodules. Uh, uh, calcitonin was repeated uh, just one week after our observation uh, by colleagues uh, in oncology that uh, uh, are following the patient for another tumor. And uh, the first uh, value was 150 picomol per liter, and the second was uh, 250. And this uh, was clearly inconsistent as the patient surely <laughs> had a medullary thyroid cancer, but such values uh, are not consistent at just seven, uh, seven days uh, apart. And uh, we measured procalcitonin that was uh, significantly increased. So the diagnosis was confirmed. And what happened was that uh, there were two different uh, uh, management of samples. The true results was the second one, while probably when the uh, first uh, sample was obtained, there was a suboptimal pre-analytical angling and a decrease of calcitonin concentration of current. So in conclusion, uh, our data and also my personal practice demonstrate that ProCT is useful for, for the diagnosis and uh, monitoring of medullary thyroid cancer. It uh, should be noted as I work here yeah, also in laboratory setting, this is a relevant uh, problem and with uh, direct uh, uh, rebounds on uh, clinical uh, decisions. 
and it is important to note that procalcitonin show a significantly better pre-analytical and analytical characteristics. And so it is really a perfect candidate to replace calcitonin as a new standard of care in the management of medullary thyroid cancer. These are my disclosures. And I want to conclude with this uh, landscape of Lago Maggiore between Italy and Switzerland. And with this uh, landscape, I thank you very much for your invitation. Thank you, Dr. Giovanniello. Fantastic presentation. Really, really um, um, a, good, a good summary, first of the calcitonin and also uh, a strong argument uh, for Procalcitonin in clinical practice. Um, so uh, I do have a few questions, and some of those are in regards to the calcitonin part of that. So um, there had been uh, instances in which we had been able to find inconsistent um, calcitonin levels depending on the institution and the labs. You know, we always have this variation among assays. Uh, what is what is the extent to which, uh, what is the variation between assays in regards to the magnitude of difference? So how much are we expecting the difference between one assay with calcitonin from one institution and another institution that is using a different assay? How much variation should we expect? Yeah, so the, 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 the problem of comparability of you know, different assays is due to different, uh, to different reasons. The first one is different antibodies employed by different assays. And uh, this is compounded by the fragmentation of calcitonin. So the uh, variability is highly enough to have some patients uh, with uh, positive values in one laboratory and negative in another in another one, or uh, with uh, significantly different concentration uh, measured in in two laboratories. So I observed uh, patients with. Uh, completely negative calcitonin in one assay and a significantly positive value in the in another one so i i i observed i think uh, up to 56 50 60 percent variation that is uh, significant wow. in laboratory medicine wow and um one of the one of the issues with for instance in thyroid cancer with thyroglobulin is the presence of thyroglobulin antibodies I have never heard the issue of, of antibodies against calcitonin. Uh, I'm not sure if that is pertinent with the measurement, but is any problems of patients developing antibodies against calcitonin? So antibodies, uh, specific antibodies are against calcitonin are not reported, you are right. There are mm -hmm. two antibody related issues uh, with calcitonin. One is heterophilic antibodies. This is also mm -hmm. a problem for thyroglobulin, but it's uh, much uh, much rare compared to thyroglobulin antibodies. Uh, basically, heterophilic antibodies uh, create a bridge between uh, capture and, uh, and detection antibody and produce false positive results. This is also described for uh, for procalcitonin. Uh, sorry, for calcitonin. And uh, recently, we published two cases of patients with false positive calcitonin due to heterophilic antibodies with a negative procalcitonin measurement confirming uh, the usefulness of procalcitonin as a reflex test. And the other problem that is reported in literature is uh, the macrocalcitonin that is similar mm -hmm. to macroprolactin or macro TSH. It's due to large antibodies, EGM or, uh, or EGG, that are not specific uh, against uh, calcitonin, but may produce this agglomerated, this large molecule and again, can produce false positive results. These are a rare, a rare uh, event that may, may occur, and uh, it is important to, to know that they may rarely be observed. So in those instances, are those are uh, values of calcitonin that are really, really high, that is not consistent with the clinical picture, and those could be either because of heterophils, uh, antibody, or even the microcalcitonin that you were referring. Yeah, and, yeah. And it seems that in both instances, procalcitonin might might be helpful. Yeah. Uh, in, okay. in our experience, in all cases, we observed that procalcitonin was uh, 
uh, indicate the correct uh, the correct diagnosis. So in both cases uh, with uh, heterophilic antibodies, uh, procalcitonin was undetectable. Okay, no, that's very helpful. And one 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 issue that we face in practice is the is the is the biotin intake and how much that interferes with so many of the endocrine assays. Is there any interference between biotin and calcitonin assays? So uh, the interference of biotin is, uh, uh, of course, related to the assay architecture. This may affect all assays uh, using streptavidine biotin uh, uh, separation methods. Uh, theoretically, uh, as uh, calcitonin assay is a, a direct immunoassay, as TSH, a false negative results can be expected in patients taking biotin. Until now, no results in my uh, knowledge were reported in the literature, uh, but theoretically this, uh, this may happen. So it is uh, better when uh, a platform using streptavidin biotin uh, separation is uh, adopted in your laboratory to ask patients to refrain from biotin intake for 48 hours. Yeah, no, that's, that's extremely Where well, from the side of caution, as uh, it, it is better, we generally advise, or in case of unexpected results, we inquire with the patients about uh, the intake of biotin. Yeah, here at Mayo, we we are we are very scared of biotin, and we we go with five days before. Yeah, the, I know, I know, the... I know, I know very well some of your laboratory people. Yeah. I know they <laughs> guard on on this problem. <laughs> yes, um, and uh, you you mentioned something about calcitonin having a biphasic half life. Can can you tell us more how that impacts? The, the values we get with the patients get these uh, results uh, by getting blood drawn in the morning. So are we are we are we saying that depending on the time of the day and also the time between the test and the results, there is a variation? Um, concern. This is not very very well approached. The, the problem is more relevant for patients of course, that are operated on for medullary carcinoma, as depending on the time of sampling, we can obtain uh, different uh, levels of calcitonin. Concerning the, the time of sample, there is no uh, data uh, concerning a significant difference. What is significantly related to different results is the time uh, after sampling and the handling of the, the sample in, the, in, this, uh, in, this, uh, in this time. So what is really relevant is to take the sample, to transport uh, fastly to the laboratory, to process mm -hmm. the sample uh, as soon as possible and to store uh, frozen until uh, the analysis is, uh, is performed. This is the most critical point uh, concerning calcitonin measurement, the pre-analytical phase. No, yeah, and, and and this is quite relevant. We do we do get sometimes these consults, uh, and I imagine my colleagues sometimes they they have too. Is these consults for international patients, and uh, they they come with calcitonin values. And I wonder to what extent many labs across the world follow this very rigid process, you know, because of the quality of of having the as you refine, as you say, that it has to be a specific way to process the material in order to keep the calcitonin um, uh, for measurement. Uh, I wonder if the procalcitonin then, it seems quite stable, is a better marker in circumstances in which you know that maybe the, the, the team and the equipment and the process is not, is not of high quality. Yeah. Particularly in some, uh, you know, developing countries that uh, might not have that cap capability. Yeah. So thank you for this question. I think that the, all in all, the the, the 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 most relevant advantage of procalcitonin is exactly in uh, its pre-analytical and analytical characteristics. Concerning uh, different laboratories uh, performing calcitonin, uh, basing on my experience, we receive patients from different regions and countries. Uh, the, not all laboratories probably uh, perform such measurement uh, with uh, a correct pre-analytical uh, uh, handling. 
And this is uh, due to the fact that uh, currently calcitonin can be measured on uh, automated platform performing a lot of different analyses. Uh, while in the past, uh, calcitonin was only measured in dedicated, specialized uh, mm. laboratories. The advantage of procalcitonin is that uh, it is run at the day on daily basis in laboratories, uh, uh, as it is widely used in internal medicine, in the, uh, critical care, in infective diseases, and is uh, very stable at pre-analytical level. So it is, uh, and especially, uh, is uh, the method for the, the, the method and antibodies for detecting procalcitonin were patented by only one manufacturer that is Brahms Thermo Fisher. The patent was shared with different manufacturers. Now, uh, this with different manufacturers, the architecture of the measurement uh, remained the same. So um, even procalcitonin levels measured by different platforms remain highly comparable. And uh, this uh, make procalcitonin more suitable than calcitonin exactly for analytical reasons more than for clinical reasons. Hmm, very interesting. Um, the, you, may, you, you, you have a slide which is, shows the conditions in which you can have elevated calcitonin and not having a, a tumor, you know, meaning that uh, false positives in patients that are looking for yeah. medullary thyroid cancer. And um, that's one of the main issues, I guess, why, uh, you know, people don't use calcitonin uh, during the diagnosis of thyroid nodules. You, how many of those conditions can also affect pro-calcitonin levels? Uh, uh, I'm particularly interested in the use of PPIs like uh, omeprazole because those are you know widely used in the United States. About 20% of the population are using those ones. So, yeah. to what extent are those affecting procalcitonin? So, basing on current uh, viable studies, there were specific studies on patients with uh, condition uh, known to increase calcitonin level. Procalcitonin remained highly accurate even in this condition. It is not reported. A significant increase in a patient with chronic kidney disease, or for example, those taking omeprazole. So, the group of Crutch published on clinical chemistry some years ago a study where patients were challenged with uh, PPI, other patients uh, carried um, chronic kidney disease, and it was demonstrated that uh, procalcitonin was uh, not affected or only very marginally affected by such condition compared to calcitonin. Okay, so that, that's how you, you were explaining that the, in your practice, when you have a, a positive calcitonin level, you run the procalcitonin in addition just to perhaps improve the specificity of this process. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, so currently as, uh, as uh, calcitonin is still recommended in many guidelines, we still work with both markers and are using the procalcitonin as a reflex test. And uh, we compare the procalcitonin with uh, fine needle aspirate, with uh, calcitonin washout measurement and other second level tools. And uh, the comparison is uh, favorable for procalcitonin. Uh, this is a, this don't require additional procedures on the patient, but simply a reflex on the same sample uh, with the results obtained in a few minutes. So it yeah, is uh, it's very useful. And this is a lowered as uh, uh, out of label, out of label use. Mm -hmm. Personally, okay. I think that we can, uh, we can uh, use procalcitonin uh, as a replacement, but for now our practice is based on reflex uh, strategy. And, uh, uh, and okay, perfect. That, that sounds good. So any positive calcitonin, automatically triggers the measurements of procalcitonin in your practice. That's yeah. how it's set up. Okay. Um, I, we are running, running out of time, but the last question I have is, you know, do, there are some medullary type cancers that become so aggressive and redifferentiated cancers that we start seeing that they lose the ability to produce calcitonin and we start seeing actually the CEA market rising and the calcitonin kind of plateauing. For that, for us, that is a bad so we know that things are happening, tumor is becoming more aggressive. 
is any role of procalcitonin in those patients that uh, in those tumors that are really becoming more aggressive? So this is a very interesting question. So there are no data until now. What we uh, observed in, in very few patients uh, carrying uh, the treated with uh, TKI therapy is that procalcitonin kinetics during therapy is uh, more stable with less fluctuation than calcitonin. But this is not related to your questions. I think that theoretically, as yes, procalcitonin is a precursor of calcitonin in the cell, uh, they differentiate. Uh, I expect a reduction in procalcitonin too and the uh, CIA remain uh, pivotal in such cases. Yeah. But there are no uh, data on this uh, specific point until now. Very good. And, and um, I thank you for answering all those questions. I think that your uh, presentation was fantastic and, and certainly, as I mentioned before, a strong case for the measurement of procalcitonin. Um, we want to thank you, Dr. Gemaniola, for your time and also thank you, the audience, uh, for your participation. Uh, we'll have a tumor board next week, so um, consider attending. And uh, thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you.